Hi, my name is Alban de Shutter. I am a cardiovascular disease fellow at uh, the John Oshner Heart and Vascular Institute, uh, Oshner Clinical School, and the University of Queensland School of Medicine. And I'm here today to present uh, my paper, Body Composition and Mortality in a Large Population uh, with Preserved Ejection Fraction. Untangling the Obesity Paradox. I want to thank all of my co-authors, especially um, Dr. Levy and um, Dr. Couture, uh, as well as the co-authors Dr. Patel and Dr. Milani. What is widely known is that obesity is associated with several chronic diseases, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, coronary disease, and heart failure. What is less well known is that once you develop these diseases, multiple ideal, uh, epidemiological studies now have indicated that you actually have lower mortality uh, associated with higher BMIs, so that the obese seem to have a survival advantage. This paradoxical phenomenon has been titled the obesity paradox, since it's the obese that paradoxically do better. We wanted to investigate this further, and more importantly, we wanted to look at the impact of body composition on this phenomenon. It's well known that lean mass is associated with uh, lower mortality through its effect on muscle strength and, um, uh, and uh, physical fitness, uh, cardiorespiratory fitness in particular. So what we did is we retrospectively reviewed Echo, uh, an echocardiographic uh, uh, report database and uh, assembled demographic information such as age, gender, um, and BMI on these individuals. What we did was we um, looked at mortality over a 3.1 year time span on average through the National Death Index. We calculated body fat based on the Jackson-Pollock equation, which is a linear equation of BMI, gender, and age, and predicts body fat. In addition, we calculated lean mass based on the proportion of um, BMI that was not attributed to fat. Subsequently, we divided the entire population up into high and low BMI based on a gender-adjusted um, classification. In addition, we looked at gender-adjusted body fat tertiles and um, gender-adjusted lean mass groups, whole, low and high uh, lean mass. What we found was that indeed in this um, uh, secondary referral population of, al of almost 50,000 patients referred for echocardiography with preserved ejection fraction, is what we found is that indeed BMI was associated with improved uh, survival. However, when we separated the, the population out in the lean and the obese, what we found was that in those lean by BMI criteria is that BMI itself was actually associated with improved survival, but in those obese uh, by BMI criteria, BMI was actually associated with worse survival. So when we separated BMI out in lean mass group, high and low, and body fat tertile, is, uh, what we found is that in the entire population, lean mass was protective, while body fat, when adjusted for lean mass, was not. Body fat alone, after adjustment for other confounders, was protective. But once you adjusted for lean mass, that protective effect was no longer found. When we looked at the lean population, the population with lower BMIs, um, we found that lean mass was uh, protective, but body fat was not when both were taken into the model. When we only looked at body fat, again we found that body fat was protective. And then lastly, in the high um, the BMI uh, group, what we found was that we, as we remember, BMI was detrimental, which was seemed to be mainly due to the effect of body fat on mortality, since lean mass, after adjustment for body fat, was again found to be protective. All of these models were created after adjusting for left ventricular mass index, ejection fraction, uh, age, 
and gender to, uh, as potential confounders. What these results seem to indicate is that while both in the lean part of the population and the po entire population, uh, BMI is protective, it seems to be mainly due to an effect of lean mass. Now, if you look at body fat by itself, since it weakly correlates with lean mass, in the lean you can find a protective effect of body fat, which disappears after adjusting for lean mass. In the obese, however, um, it seems that higher percentage body fat is actually associated with worse prognosis while lean mass remains protective. Clinically, this seems to indicate that the, uh, focusing on the preservation of lean mass in um, and some secondary disease states might be indicated, and especially focus, um, uh, putting an emphasis on cardiorespiratory and uh, muscular fitness, which are often associated with lean mass. In addition, when looking at the obesity paradox in different secondary care states, it's important to look at body composition because it might be the lean mass of the BMI that is protective and not the body fat itself. So it might not be an obesity paradox per se, it might be a BMI paradox which is mainly caused by a lean mass, by a protective effect of lean mass which is not necessarily paradoxical. Our study was limited um, mainly by the use of a calculation to calculate body fat rather than direct measurement using the gold standard DEXA. Um, and in addition, this was a um, secondary care referral population, um, an echocardiographic retrospective review, which might not be generalizable to the entire population. And on top of that, we were not able to adjust for some very important clinical confounders since it's well known that some uh, advanced lung diseases and malignancies are associated with, associated with cachectic states. In conclusion, despite these limitations, our study seems to indicate that the obesity paradox, namely an uh, associated improved survival associated with higher BMIs, might be due to the protective effects of lean mass both in the lean and in the obese. However, what we've been able to f find in this study was that in the obese, body fat could actually be detrimental after adjustment for lean mass. Thank you very much for your attention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.